here again to bring you their best bets and expert picks for every game on this week's NFL schedule. It's the Green Man, brought to you by WSN.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome to week 13 of the WSN Weekly NFL Pick Show. My name is Adam Forsyth, joined as always by Ryan Sullivan each and every week. We are so happy you join us. We're going to break down each and every game of the upcoming NFL schedule, give our best bets, our prop picks, the overs, the unders, the spreads. We break it all down right here on WSN.com. And before we get into week 13 action, we got to let you know how we did in week number 12 with some of our picks, some of our best bets, some of our biggest misses. And let's jump right in, Ryan. How did you do on your best bet you last little, week? You have a little twinkle. In oh, your I eye do. When you say that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I know how you did. Rub it in a little bit. You know what? I I agreed with. Uh, I mean, we were throwing out last week. You know, we want you know throw some comments on the videos. Uh, let us know what you think, and, and we'll talk about them a little bit. I agree with our friends Emil and Evan uh, because they were saying let's go Dolphins and I wasn't saying that the Dolphins would win the game, but it was a huge ten point spread uh, in favor of the Cleveland Browns. Anytime there's a 10-point spread in the Browns, nobody's picking that. So, obviously, I figured the Dolphins could cover that no problem. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. The Dolphins did not cover. They got shellacked. I had too much faith in Fitzmagic. I was getting cocky because they started to win some football games a little bit. They were looking all right. But I forgot that Fitzpatrick's usually just good for two to three performances a year. Um, and they're not all consecutive. So, that one's on me. How about you, Adam? How was your best bet? Oh, it was good. Yeah, I know it was. I had the Seahawks to cover and to win against the Eagles, and they did just that clinical road performance by Seattle, which is not an easy task when you're playing in the city of brotherly love. Not much love shown there. The Seabirds defense giving Carson Wentz headaches all day long, and he was terrible. And I'm on a heater, Ryan. Four of five weeks now, I have hit my best bet prop. I can see the sweat. Oh, it's It's hot. (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's red hot. It is a heater, baby. Now, while I did have a good best bet hit, I also had a few clunkers. My biggest miss, a couple of duds. I thought Mitch Trubisky would have a horrible day. He kind of did, but I thought so bad to the fact that he'd have the under on Allen Robinson receiving yards. Not only did Robinson exceed, had hit the over, he smashed it. So I was completely wrong there. And I was also a big swing in the miss on predicting the Falcons and the Packers to cover. Not so the case, and rightfully so. We said, hit us up in the comments on YouTube and on WSN.com, and Laura said, Atlanta's a mirage. Don't fall for it, guys. Sorry, Laura. We should have listened to you. Laura, I'm sorry. I messed up. What was your biggest miss this week? That's that's well played. I mean, the, the best bet was... I'm just going to chalk it up to the bet. I, I, I want to talk about some, some brighter things. I want to talk about the things I hit because the best bet I've been, oh, it's been killing me all week long and I apologize uh, to those out there. But you can also blame uh, Emil and Evan on uh, YouTube as well. So give them <laughs> most of the blame. It's not throw, me. Throw them under the bus. Yeah, yeah, chuck them right in. All right, let's ignore um, the biggest misses then. Let's get let's get into the more happy well, news. Well, yeah. I mean, there, there the were... The prop bets. Yeah, there were a few games that we decided to go a little bit off the board to, to kind of go with the gut feeling here. Uh, the over in Jacksonville, Tennessee, we both agreed on on that one and yeah, we nailed that no problem the under in the Steelers Bengals we both agreed on that one nailed it no problem uh, my best prop once again Mr. Surehands Mr. Every Day uh, Michael Thomas going over 100 yards this guy's been killing it all season long uh, he had 10 catches on 11 targets and a touchdown once again uh, guy continues his absolute tear and I've got my eye on him again this week so we'll get to that in a little bit um, but yeah I, the, the miss I, I can't live it down we can throw it at me. You can you can make a meme out of this guy if you want. That's fine. I'm sorry. I won't make that mistake again. All right. Well, I, I trust you. You'll redeem it's yourself hard, this week. It's hard to live it down. I had a few prop bets that hit as well. I was able to sneak out a few solid ones. I easily hit the Josh Jacobs on the under for rushing yards. I've been hitting him on the over for weeks now, but I was just really weary of the Jets' run defense. Got that one correct. Also correctly predicted that Amari Cooper would have a tough day against the Pats. Hit the under there. And it was able to read the trends, and it was just strictly trends, no game data whatsoever. I hit the under on the Lions-Redskins game while predicting a Washington victory, and I don't think many people had that one. So uh, I'll toot my own horn there. So let's get into our best bets for this week's games. And I'll, I'll kick things off because they were my best bet last week. So, like, why not? It's not too far of a departure. I'm, I'm yeah. sticking in the Emerald City. I like Seattle to cover the three points against Minnesota this week. It is the Monday night game. Seattle managed to cruise to a, a win on the road in Philly. Like, I love this matchup against the Vikings. I'm surprised the line isn't higher. It's a home date for Seattle, and they're they're killing it this season. 
I mean, Minnesota's a good team, but Seattle at home, the the 12th man, the whole fan thing, the noise, it's going to cause massive problems for Minnesota. And they also play really well against the Vikings. They've won against Minnesota in each of the last five meetings. So I think they extend that to six on Monday night. That is my best bet of the week. Well played. You and I have a nice fair friendship in that, you know, if I were just say, you know, I like Seattle too is my best bet. That just it, it wouldn't be like us. I like to go off the board a little bit. I like to change things up a little bit. Not saying anything against that bet. I think it's a great pick. I think it's a very safe bet. And I completely agree that line should be very different from what it is. But nonetheless, my best bet this week, yeah, the Jets over the Cincinnati Bengals. The Jets right now favored by three and a half points. Yeah, sure, they're on the road. Andy Dalton is checking back in, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't have faith in him earlier in the year. We shouldn't have faith in them now. I'm just going to throw that out there. And right now, the Jets, they are hot. Maybe even hotter than your current heater. Uh, The Jets are looking solid out there. Sam Darnold's found a rhythm. Lev Bell has found his feet. That run defense is looking as solid as ever. I mean, you were mentioned it there with Jacobs. Uh, The NYJ have averaged... 34 points a game through their last three. Meanwhile, Cincinnati, just 11 points a game through their last three. Uh, It's a minimal spread, and I like New York to win. I like them to cover and prove me right and get me back into the win column. All right, I like it, buddy. Well, you just heard our predictions from our best bet of the week. Now we want to hear yours. Give us your wildest predictions for week number 13, much like Emil, Evan, and Laura did. And we promise we'll discuss the top comments in next week's video. And be sure to like and subscribe for weekly NFL predictions. And speaking of those predictions, it is time for for week number 13. But before we get there, for our listeners living in New Jersey or West Virginia, go to WSN.com for special bonuses and deals if you want to bet on this week's games. All you got to do is compare the best legal online sports books and you get yourself some exclusive offers when you sign up and when you start betting. And you should start betting because this is week number 13 of the NFL. It is the Thanksgiving edition of WSN Pick'em. And we'll start with those Thursday games. There are a trifecta on tap. We'll start with the early one. Chicago at Detroit. Bears favored by one. The over-under set at 39 points. And I love it. It's just kind of a shame that we have to kick off Thanksgiving with this clunker. I mean, it's Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for you guys that you don't have to watch this game if you're not a Lions or Bears fan. The Lions season completely imploding. The team's injury riddled. Well, the Bears' Mitch Trubisky, as I mentioned off the top, actually kind of showed some flashes of being a competent quarterback. But overall, Chicago just not really impressing, despite picking up the win over the Giants. I will be spending time with my family, thankful that I can skip this game. But if you really feel the need to dabble... Even with a small number of 39 points, I'm going to take the under. It's hit in Chicago's last six games, five of the last six games, and six of the last eight meetings between these two teams. So again, if you're looking for something, the under is the way to go. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong uh, on all fronts there. I mean, this will be a clunker. You have Mitch Trubisky, who on any other team is holding a clipboard against a guy that usually holds a clipboard uh, in Driscoll. So, uh, But I, I'm, I'm siding with the, the Detroit Lions here. And again, I... I I, you know, I hinted at the Bo Scarborough love, but um, I think this guy is, is is absolutely solid. He's NFL ready as he's showing right now. Um, and so really, it doesn't really look Detroit has lost a step, no pun intended, when it comes to the run game, um, which, you know, was working pretty well for them so far throughout the season. So anyhow, I, I, I like Detroit to, to take this game. And it's not just because I think they have the edge. I just have no faith in the Chicago Bears right now. I mean, whether they're at home, whether they're on the road, it doesn't make any lick of difference. Um, you know, Matt Nagy, it's it's taken him this long to finally remember Tariq Cohen's name. He's starting to get some looks <laughs> finally. I mean, this guy's been the X Factor. He's amazing uh, the last few years when you utilize him and they haven't done it. And it also looks like Taylor Gabriel, uh, you know, he's in concussion protocol right now this week. He'll probably miss the early game here on Thursday night. So, um, yeah, I don't see the Bears walking away with this one. I see the Lions enjoying the first turkey leg of the week. All right, let's get into game number two of the Thursday schedule. Buffalo at Dallas. Cowboys favored by a touchdown. Seven points. The over-under at 44.5. Ryan, what do you make of this one? This is a tougher one to call. I mean, the Cowboys, it, it, it's hard to gauge them on last week's performance because it was just, I mean, they were playing inside... Uh, they were playing under the ocean pretty much. It was just a monsoon at Foxborough. It was a disgusting looking game and nobody could really get any offense going. So it's hard to gauge the Cowboys on that. But it is easier to gauge the Bills because they are rolling on all fronts. Uh, you know, we've been talking about here and there on the shows as well. Cole Beasley, uh, again, caught six of nine last week. I like him. If you're looking around 
for uh, some props this week. And I also have a hunch. I also have a feeling that Josh Allen's going to find the end zone using his feet as well. I'm going to throw that out there. Um, but I like the uh, the Bills in this game to to cover that spread. Um, you know, I don't see Dallas winning by seven. I think it'll be a lot closer than that. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely a toss up. I just I don't see Dallas uh, working that spread. So maybe even a money line bet's the way to go. I like using his feet to find the end zone as opposed to well, as opposed to throwing the ball. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's there's two things a quarterback can do. <laughs> Run <laughs> yeah, and throw. Or pass. Yes. All right. Well, I, we're actually on the same page here, Ryan, because I think this is actually probably a closer game than most people think. Dallas probably get to play a little scared because Jerry Jones finally, finally after years, criticized Jason Garrett after the coach made a bunch of like just weird play calls last week. And now his job might be a little bit on the line. Like, Garrett plays it very safe. That's why he was kicking a field goal when they're down seven. That made no sense. Or down 10 at that point. Buffalo, the exact opposite. As you mentioned, Josh Allen, he's running around out there using his feet. And I think Buffalo lets him do his thing, which I really appreciate. Buffalo 5-0-1 against the spread in their last six games on the road. I think that record improves on Thursday. A little bit too tight of a game to tell who's going to win on the money line but Buffalo to cover the spread and one play I really like on the props for this one on overs for receptions and receiving yards he's killing it for me on my fantasy team John Brown quietly yeah. having a mm-hmm. great season he's holding three touchdowns over the last two games kind of hope that trend continues on Thursday very underrated absolutely all right let's keep it going it is the night game for our Thursday night schedule and it is New Orleans at Atlanta the Saints favored by seven the over under set at 50 and this game is the one I'm looking forward to of the three Thursday games the most the Saints can secure a divisional title they can inch towards a potential first round buy uh, Atlanta kind of tricked everyone with a couple of big wins they tricked us for sure oh yeah a couple of big wins earlier in the month and then hey and they just slapped him in the face with that pathetic performance on Sunday. Uh, definitely a reminder that they had one of the worst defenses in the league, and it showed. A little bit worried about New Orleans' defense, too, in this one, especially after the Carolina come back on Sunday and kind of get back into that game. So with these two struggling defenses, I like the points. I'm taking the over for this one. A couple of high-flying offenses, two struggling defenses. The formula is there for success. Saints being on the road, not exactly the biggest deal in this game because it is just another dome game for them, and that's the conditions they like. They've won six of the last seven away from Louisiana, and Elvin Kamara, long, long, long overdue for a breakout game, although I don't think it's on the ground. Atlanta actually is a surprisingly strong run defense for considering how bad their defense actually is, but there's yards to be had in the passing game, especially short yard screen situations. That's where Kamara thrives, and that is why I'm taking Kamara on the over for receptions. So Saints to cover, Kamara on the over for receptions. Well played. Well played. Uh, yeah, no, I, I I like all of that. And, and I'm with you, dude. Kamara, he, he deserves something here. He needs something. Because uh, I know a lot of angry fantasy owners with this guy. And uh, just, yeah, there you go. Nobody saw me. it coming. I mean, That's after me. a few great seasons, especially with Mark Ingram out of the way. But maybe that was the X factor. He got a few extra rests uh, during uh, Ingram's stint on the field there. But anyhow, the uh, this will be the rematch of one of the worst games, if not the worst, of Drew Brees' career. And he's shown throughout his career that when it comes to big rematches, when it comes to time to, you know, you know, show his cards, he's one of the best. And so I the Saints, I completely agree with you. I think they're taking this game. I think they're covering that spread. Um, you know, they're gonna be angry in this game. And uh, I have four predictions. Oh boy. Yeah, Let's go. Four, a jam pack yeah. here. Um, and you know, take these for what you will. But um, I like the Saints to win the money line. I mean, as we mentioned. Um, and I mean, let's. I think the spread, I think it'll be closer than a lot of people think, but the money line, I think, is definitely the safest bet there. Uh, Michael Thomas, 10 or more receptions. Absolutely. You have to go back to week four. Week four, the last time this guy got less than 10 targets in a game. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Calvin Ridley. Over 80 yards receiving prop. I'm digging that. Right now, he's getting used a lot. Julio Jones a little bit banged up right now, too. So he could definitely capitalize. And a Jared Cook touchdown. It'll be his third in as many games. Um, he doesn't see a lot of the pigskin, you know, midfield, you know, inside the 40s and the 30s. But when it comes time for the red zone, Jared Cook is the man. So He's cooking. Uh, he's cooking, baby. So throwing that out there. 
All right, Real Money Daily Fantasy Sports, a great option for people living in a state where traditional sports betting is not legal. Maybe take Jared Cook on Sunday or Thursday because it is a Thursday game. There it is. Don't take him on Sunday. You'll be well past the point on that point. But <laughs> head to WSN.com. You can set you up with DraftKings links and FanDuel links. It's all there. It's awesome. Check it out. Ryan, what is our first game on the Sunday schedule? All right, Sunday morning. Here we go. Cleveland at Pittsburgh. Browns favored by a point. The over-under set at 40 and go. go oh you want me to go what? do you want me to go no i'll take it okay you go. i just know how i could tell how excited you well, were for this the thing game is, is that you've been waiting and waiting to break out your hodges jersey and now you get a chance here we go it's devin hodges time <laughs> in pittsburgh ladies and gentlemen that's what happens when you enter a game on sunday in the first series you accomplish more in like one series than you mason rudolph has in weeks this game is actually somehow massive for both teams Whoever loses is pretty much done for, and the winner kind of sticks around in that wild card race. Uh, the Steelers' injury woes, they're mounting, man. Like, it's its going to be real tough for them to overcome that on Sunday. Well, the Browns' offense firing against Miami, like, that's not the hardest thing to do in the world. Like, 41 points against Miami is like 15 points against everybody else. But I do like... It kind of maybe gave them a shot of confidence. And I think that maybe they find the end zone with a little bit more regularly, regularity there on Sunday. And... I like Cleveland to win. I like them to cover. I will also be doubling up here because I'm not sure who's going to find the end zone, and I'm hoping both Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Touchdown prop bets. Let's go. Go Cleveland. Nice. I'm cheering for the Browns. I feel dirty. (laughs) That's fair. Hey, I took the Jets in my best bet, all right? It's true. You'll get used to it. Um, Yeah, I like Cleveland this game as well. I mean, that's a very minimal spread, and especially the way Cleveland's playing right now. It's the smallest of spreads. It really is. That's true. Um, But the way they're playing right now, I mean, like I was was kind of alluding to it before, that, uh, you know, they should be a little worse than they are on the defensive side of the football without Garrett. Um, And without, uh, I butchered his name last week, but Ogan Joby, Ogan Joby, (laughs) Ogan... Ogan Jibby, Ogan Jibby. One of those is right. You know what I mean. Uh, but anyhow, so, I mean, it's uh, it's it's kind of mind-boggling there, but they're still picking up the pace. They're still playing well. It's just that the offense is playing so much better that they don't need the defense as much, and it, that was not the case. It was definitely the reverse earlier in the season. Uh, Pittsburgh, yeah, they're down to their third-string quarterback. I have no faith in Deontay Johnson. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of analysts were ripping the Steelers on not loading up on wide receivers this past offseason. Um, you know, with the departure of Antonio Brown, they needed somebody else in there. They just gave this keys to Smith Schuster and put nobody else in the cupboard, and now it's really killing them. Uh, so, yeah, no, I, I like Cleveland to win this game, and um, it is a shame. I kind of wanted to see Mason Rudolph's revenge. Yeah. Uh, but who knows? Maybe Hodges will be that terrible that come halftime, Rudolph will get his chance. We'll see. But I'm taking Cleveland as well. All right. A couple of Cleveland picks for you. Let's go on to our next game. It is Green Bay at the New York Giants. Packers favored by 7.5 points. The over-under set at 46.5 points. And Ryan, as a Packers fan, I'm just going to pretend that last week didn't happen. It didn't happen. As a Chargers fan, I'm pretending the season didn't happen. Oh, okay, perfect. So, yeah, I'm yeah, right there with you. I'm thinking, like, what game? What What happened? What? I thought they were going to buy. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, the good news for the Packers is they have one of the easiest schedules down the stretch, which is definitely a positive. It starts this week against the Giants. New York, absolutely horrendous against the Bears, and I think that carries over into this week as well. Like, Saquon Barkley was kind of the consensus number one pick for fantasy players this year. And I know he had the early season injury, but like that doesn't make up for him struggling now in week 12, week 13 of the season. Just not living up to the fantasy billing on this one. On the Packers side of the ball, I think a rebound effort is in store. I like them to cover. And although he, he got me deep, he cut me deep because uh, I had so many little prop bets on Aaron Jones and he failed me on every single way. I'm going back to the wishing well on this one because it is a wish. I need an Aaron Jones touchdown. So that is my prop bet of the week because he hurt me emotionally. He hurt me physically in my wallet. Yeah. Aaron Jones is my pick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know what? Jones has been a safe pick for the vast majority of this season. He just kind of took the week off uh, along with all other teams that we uh, oh, alluded he, to earlier. He didn't even show. Yeah. But, I mean, this this kind of leads to the question of which Aaron Rodgers is going to show up as well. Is it going to be the guy that looks like he's still 20 or the guy that's handing out Werther's originals to his grandkids? Um, you don't know these days. I mean, it's usually two or three weeks on, one week off for Aaron Rodgers right now. He can be absolutely amazing or he can just be an afterthought uh, that plays no role whatsoever so I think it's going to be uh, the first one I think we're going to see vintage Aaron Rodgers here and I like the Packers on the money line seven and a half it's a bit of a hefty spread especially the way the Packers have been trending as of late 
Uh, I don't know if I trust it. Again, I mean, we've been saying this for a while. MetLife Stadium is not a hometown or not a home stadium for anybody um, except for the Jets last week, mind you. But nobody really dominates there. Uh, so I don't like the spread. I do like the money line um, and the total. Uh, I like the over here as well because uh, when you look at Green Bay, uh, 17 of the last 25 on the road uh, has hit the over. They're 8-3 and three straight up in their last 11 facing decent sized spread. So they're pretty good at putting points on the board. Uh, and I'm banking on that total exceed the 46 and a half this weekend all right head to wsn.com tons of betting guides for beginners and anyone wanting to learn more about strategy how sports betting works in general really and speaking of some betting what do you got for us for our next game any any good bets out there ryan oh i think so it's the new york jets against the cincinnati Bengals in cincy jets favored by three and a half points the over under set at 39 and a half. Do you mind? Do you want me to uh, go me for to it? This All is a, you. This is a continuation of what we saw a little bit earlier. I was hinting towards that best bet. I was throwing out some numbers at you. Uh, early week rumblings. Uh, we mentioned it. Andy Dalton. He's getting the reins back for this one. Uh, sorry, Ryan Finley. That's a tough go. But nonetheless, uh, either way you slice it, if we see the Jets of last week, Cincinnati does not stand a chance whatsoever in this game. I mean, they knocked off a really good uh, Raiders team that was hot, that was trending nicely, and they just made an embarrassment of them uh, on home turf. And I don't care. It doesn't matter where they play, if they're in New York or wherever they are right now. If New York can put together that same kind of performance, that same kind of caliber performance, um, I think Adam Gase's job is pretty safe come this offseason. It seems like they're playing for him right now uh, because everything was up in the air. So I like the Jets to win. I like the Jets to cover. And if you're looking for props out there, take a look at Robbie Anderson. He's been awesome these past few weeks. He's been uh, a delight. He has been. The guy's got wheels. Mm Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, this is probably the game that I'm going to disagree with you most. And I love that you made it your best bet. Mm-hmm. This has just got a bad stench to this. This is going to be an ugly game. Since he's going back to Dalton, who's already holding a grudge Hold after on. he... I didn't say it was going to be a good game. I, I just want to put that out. I said it would be a best bet. I never said this would be the game to watch or anything. Okay. 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 I want to clear the record there. But Dalton benched on his birthday. They're like, you know what? Let's go back to you now that we're 0-11 or 0-12 or whatever they're at. Like At this point, they're just trying to secure the first overall pick. But this is where I get to the Jets. All right, The Jets impressed last week. I fully give you credit for that one, but I think it was a mirage. It was the perfect home matchup for New York. Oakland traveling across the country. They don't play well on the East Coast. New York is 1-4 on the road this season, 1-6 against the AFC. So I know the temptation is to hammer the Jets on that 3.5 point spread. I'm just warning you, this has the makings of a massive letdown game. This was the big emotional, like, yeah, we got it. They're not making the playoffs, so they're not really playing for much. No. And I think that they partied hard. There's all these reports. Sam Darnold was out having a ball after, which, hey, you do you. Good on him. He's young. He deserves it. But just fair warning, that might carry over into the weekend. So... I am going nowhere near the spread for this game or the money line. Honestly, I would not be surprised if a Cincy upset. I respect your warning. I appreciate your warning. And I choose to ignore your warning. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah. The winds are blowing in the Jets' favor, my friend. Go on the J-E-T-S. All right. Let's keep your B-E-T-S. Oh, rhymes. Love them. You came up with that right now or you wrote that down last night? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Been waiting all week to throw that out there. All season. (laughs) All right, let's keep things rolling. Our next game is Philadelphia at Miami. The Eagles favored by 7.5 points. The over-under set at 46. The Eagles are bad, but lucky for them, Miami is even worse. The game very dependent on the hand injury of Carson Wentz. If he's good to go and he's not hindered by the injury, I think Philly covers with ease. The issue is if he's not, then it becomes a bit of an, you know, what happens. Dolphins making Cleveland look like a competent team with 41 points, so I can only imagine like what the Eagles can do. Again, this is all very much dependent on Wentz. So, one player I'll target in Daily Fantasy, because I'm not really comfortable with the spreads and stuff like that until I know more about Wentz. For prop bets, Miles Sanders all day long. Even if Wentz plays, he's probably going to still be feeling the effects of that hand injury. Jordan Howard's already been ruled out. So look for Sanders to see a ton of action on the ground and in the short pass game. He is going to rack up the yards. I'm scooping him up wherever I can get him. No faith in Jay Ajayi. Absolutely not. The London man. All right, no, fair enough. Uh, so, so you're where? Where did you fall with? Uh, or are you just going with the prop? Uh, until I know more about Wentz, if if Wentz plays That's and fair. he's like can rip a football, I'm taking Philadelphia all day long. But if he's 
it running around in a cast where he doesn't play, then it gets a little dicey. Yeah, if Wentz doesn't play, then that 7.5-point spread becomes pretty alluring, actually. Uh, but the Eagles, I mean, like you're saying, they're starting to become a bit of a questionable bunch over there. Um, you know, a lot of people were excited about Carson Wentz getting his big extension. Was that a great? I, I don't I mean, I, I feel more confident with that than I would with the Jared Goff extension right now. But nonetheless, I mean, a lot of people throwing out some questions there after an abysmal performance last week. Yeah, another injury. Um, this guy has been dinged up his whole career um, yet again. I mean, it doesn't look like this could be a, a major thing. But if it is serious and, and, you know, takes part in this game, yeah, you know, it's, it's a hefty spread to cover at the moment. Um, before kickoff, we'll see what happens. But uh, to suggest the Eagles are going to run the board on Miami, I think is ludicrous. Uh, the total has gone under in four of these last uh, two teams' five meetings. I don't see it hitting 46 this week. The under is my favorite bet in this matchup by a landslide. If I had to choose, though, I still do like Philly on the money. And uh, while you don't support my Jets bet, I do support your Miles Sanders prop. I think that's good money right there. All right, next game is maybe the game of the year. San Francisco at Baltimore. The Ravens favored by four and a half points over under set at 46. Ryan, break it down for us. Yeah, I mean, you just said it. This, by all counts, should be the game of the week, let alone perhaps the game of the year. Baltimore uh, shown over the past few weeks that they are absolutely for real. Lamar Jackson with huge wins over Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, and now the Jared Goff. Uh, who has looked just absolutely <laughs> electrifying um, until he steps on the field. Then he looks terrible. But, you know, between games, he's not too bad. Um, anyhow, they've knocked off these high-flying teams. Now they come in to take on a San Francisco bunch, which we keep doubting every single week. I still don't feel confident. Even though they embarrassed the Packers, I don't know if I can say San Fran uh, is meeting all the hype just yet, but this should be a pretty good game, all things considered. And it's a spread of just four and a half points, which means even the uh, even the lines makers are, are planning on this one being a close battle. Uh, so I like Baltimore for the win, the way they're playing right now. I mean, they're so great on offense, whether it's through the air attack, the ground game with Mark Ingram. Uh, their defense looks incredible. Uh, I like them to win. I like them to cover, but I think that, yeah, this is going be a, a, a pretty damn close game right down to the wire it's potential for like a super bowl preview honestly yep. Bo- both teams coming off dominant efforts as ryan brought up against teams loaded with talent as ryan brought up can we just hand the mvp trophy to lamar jackson right now like at who could I, maybe mccaffrey or like wilson like if wilson was in the conversation but the last few weeks he's tapered a little bit not even tapered just jackson skyrocketed like yeah are you kidding yeah. me five touchdowns on the road in a primetime game it, yeah. it will be a lot tougher this week, as we saw with the 49ers pass rush and pass defense. Like They just destroyed Aaron Rodgers. I still like the Ravens this week, though. Jackson a lot more mo- mobile than Rodgers, so he can kind of scatter away. That's a huge benefit in Baltimore. 49ers do travel well. They've won five in a row away from San Fran. The Ravens are just too good, uh, especially on home field. I like the Ravens to cover. I like the over in this game a lot as well. And uh, if you're looking for a daily fantasy play, his price might be a little inflated because he did hole on a couple of touchdowns, but Willie Sneed, a pretty solid option to find the end zone Ooh, on yeah. Sunday. I like that. And I like the Roman numeral on the jersey too. Fantastic. Can we can we just throw down, by the way, while we're at it on the topic, that Robert Griffin III has the best job in pro sports right now? Oh, absolutely. He just gets front row seats to watch Lamar Jackson Actually, tear it up. No, I have an amendment to that. The Baltimore punter. Yeah, I guess so. He, I think it's like yeah. he hasn't punted in like three weeks or something like that. That's ridiculous yeah. when Jackson's in. That's nuts. Yeah. They have a hot tub on the sidelines that just he sits in all game. He does nothing else. He just gets massages. He just and... does the crossword in the hot tub. That's it. All <laughs> right. Let's keep things rolling where uh, the punters get quite a workout when these two teams play. Tampa Bay at Jacksonville. <laughs> the Jags favored by one and a half. The over under at 49. Honestly, I don't really know what to make of this game, Ryan. Both teams have very similar themes this season. They show up one game. They disappear the next one common thread. They both bleed points with brutal defenses. I think the Buccaneers win this game, but I'm not really confident enough to put any action on it. However, I will be 100% taking the over. Buccaneers games high scoring all season long. Everyone knows that. But the over has hit in four of the last five meetings between these two teams. DJ Shark. Do, 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 do. Baby Shark. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like when he gets catches and they all sing that song. Yeah, yeah. It's cute. <laughs> but know what's cute about it? He's a great daily fantasy option. Chris Conley, your boy. He'll get some mm-hmm. plenty of looks on the weekend as well, so I'm taking him on the over 
for receptions. Yeah, I like that. He's been getting a lot of targets lately. He hasn't been pulling in as many because a lot of them are going either uh, low in front of him or behind him. But once they start aiming in those crosshairs, he's going to be a busy man. Uh, yeah, Chark the Shark, great play in this one. Absolutely, it's a great call. And I don't really need to add another log to the fire. I mean, you mentioned pretty much everything there. I love the over in this game as well. Yeah, Tampa, Jacksonville, it's it's tough to call because they're very similar teams in a lot of in a lot of ways, a lot of parallels there. Um, so yeah, I just think the over is the safest play. I think that's a great call. Jameis Winston, he is great for a few giveaways a game, but he's also great at putting up yards and putting numbers on the board. Um, he's shown that all season long. I mean, obviously his biggest Achilles heel is that he can't always hit his own guys right in the hands. Um, he's usually hitting the other team, but uh, nonetheless... Point score going on that board. Take the over. That is a great call. We have an accord. I'm not a Buccaneers fan, but I, if I was a fan, he would drive me nuts because he's so talented. He makes so many amazing plays, and then he just yeah. throws a pick. Yeah. He's like, you build up all this trust. Yeah. And, and I would also be disappointed that they haven't made the Cream School jerseys the full-time jersey. That's also a very good point. Thank you. you no know one else is a good point? Betting advice on WSN.com. Expert online sportsbook reviews that let you compare all the best legal sports betting sites available in the United States. Ryan, our next game is what? We have Tennessee at Indianapolis, a sweet AFC South battle. Colts favored by three. The over-under set at 43, so not that huge. Uh, I hate how wrong... I was on Indy last week. I mean, it came right down to the wire, and it was a total killer. Um, I was I was just expecting so much better, but with Marlon Mack out, Eric Ebron has now hit the IR. He's done for the season, so Jack Doyle, if you're looking for a fantasy play and you don't have a lot of money to spend on tight ends, he's not a bad guy to look at. Oh, Doyle rules. Nicely done. Uh, but yeah, we've been, we've been doubting Ryan Tannehill for a while, and this is going to sound very foreign coming out of my mouth. But is he an elite quarterback right now? Ryan Tannehill? <laughs> an elite in the same sentence? I'm I surprised you just, just like burst into flames yeah, there. Yeah, I don't know what did I just say. I blacked out. I don't know what I just said. Uh, but no, he's, he's looking pretty sharp right now. And uh, to compliment him as well, Derek Henry has looked awesome too. Um, you know, his, his game has really, really come around. Before he was just kind of a flash in the pan kind of guy. But this season, he's really, really breaking out, uh, which is good to see because he's definitely got that talent. Um, so anyhow, uh, the Titans have become a, a, an elite AFC South team, which usually is an oxy. <laughs> Moron, What's the record? Like seven and AFC South. Okay, I'm not saying they're elite NFL, <laughs> AFC South. Like, like right. I said, usually an oxymoron. Uh, it's not saying much, but this year uh, they do have one of the most competitive divisions in football. You got to hand it to them there. I like Tennessee to win, uh, and this should be a very, very tight affair. I like them to win, and so yeah, there you go. I'm I'm in the same boat with you. Like I question, like, are the Titans real now? Like what's happening? Well, can we there, say can we say that in the same yeah. sense? It's just weird. The NFL schedule was really weird last week. That there was only two afternoon games, so I was forced to watch a full Tennessee Titans game for the first time this year. And I'll give them credit; they look legit. Like I, the one thing that bugs me is because I've had them on my fantasy team before. Like why can't Derrick Henry just play consistent football? Like September and October, he's like nothing, and mm -hmm. every year, and then November, December, people who have hung like they hang on to him a little bit too long. All yeah. of a sudden, this guy's like amazing. He's one of the yeah. best players in the league, and he's doing it again this year. Unreal against Jacksonville. Now. A little bit of a recency bias here. I kind of like Tennessee in this one. The Colts hit and miss this year. Uh, T.Y. Hilton should be healthier this week. He should see more targets. But Andy's still running back at, by committee. You mentioned that Marlon Mack is out. So where do they kind of go with that? They have a bunch of options, but none I really like. The only thing that scares me about committing to the Titans here is history is on Indy's side. Indy dominates this matchup. They've won 14 of their previous 16 meetings against Tennessee. However... I am going to roll the dice. I am going with the Titans. The over also in play. It's hit in Tennessee's last five games. So Indy's won. Sorry, give that give that stat one more time. Indy has beaten the Titans in 14 of the last 16 meetings. Okay, we're talking Andrew Luck here against Marcus Mariota. Keep that in mind. I think we're going back to Peyton Manning. And we might be going back to Peyton. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know about the stat. But, but you know, you're not wrong. At home as well. I mean, Indy's usually pretty deadly. I relied on that last week when I said Washington won 14-15 against the Lions. 
True. And somehow it worked out. Yeah. It's weird. These like it's just certain teams play each other well. Yeah. Let's keep things rolling. I did just mention Washington. They're our next game. They're at Carolina. The Panthers favored by ten, double digit spread, over under forty and a half points. And full credit to the Panthers. I thought they were going to get stomped by the Saints last week, but they hung around. They kept it close. I said the only way if they stay in that game, the only way is if Christian McCaffrey puts that team on his back, and he actually did. Found the end zone twice. This week, he actually might top that number and maybe get in for three touchdowns because he's facing a Washington team near the bottom of the league in run defense, allowing over 130 yards on the ground per game. Always a little wary of a double-digit point spread, but I'm going to make the exception in this case because the Redskins are just awful. Like It's not impressive you beat the Lions last week. Like That's not an accomplishment you should be like, yeah, I did it. I beat the Lions. Yeah, Cool. I like the Panthers to cover, claw their way to a win. I am loading up on Christian McCaffrey props. He's probably going to be the most expensive player in daily fantasy, so I'll skip out on that one. Yeah. I also like DJ Moore over on receiving yards, and there is great, great value out there on Curtis Samuel to find the end zone. Yeah, yeah. Moore had a great week last week, too. Um, okay. In the words of one of my favorite baseball managers of all time, Lou Pinella. Guy was a gem. Who? Lou Pinella. Who? Slightly paraphrased. Dwayne Haskins. You don't want to be treated like a man. <laughs> That's a great Lou Pinella. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. Um, yeah, okay, we're not talking baseball ever again on this show. <laughs> or that was, that or was no the more Lou. Yeah, that reference. was the one reference because the guy is taking selfies with fans before the game is over. He missed the last snap of the freaking football game. I like he's that. taking a selfie. It's lovely. Good for you adhering yourself to the Washington faithful. Maybe do it five minutes later when the game <laughs> is over. A football game takes 60 minutes. You should know this by now. I just I absolutely hate it because it's a guy that's it's this early in his career and I mean this isn't a show about individual players it's about team versus team but nonetheless uh, he's the leader of this team and he's getting cocky after one win a, a, they barely won that game and he's getting cocky going to the fans for photos already I don't like it I don't like Washington I have no faith whatsoever in Dwayne Haskins Detroit lost that game more than Washington won that game and throw that out there yep. Um, love Bo Scarborough. Uh, I'm just going to fit that in wherever I can. Uh, Carolina, on the other hand, let's get to them. They actually showed up pretty well against the New Orleans Saints. I mean, everyone was getting down on Allen, the quarterback there. Uh, obviously, the fairy tale came to an end a few weeks ago, but he started to find his rhythm again. And yeah, run CMC, Christian McCaffrey again, killing it out there. And you're absolutely on the money with those props. This guy might find the end zone three times. That is a pretty safe bet uh, because Washington's run defense is terrible, especially against screen passes as well, uh, which we know uh, run CMC loves to grab. I like Carolina to win. I like Carolina to cover. Uh, yeah, let's go Cats. Here we go. All right, let's keep things rolling. We have reached the late afternoon games on our Sunday slate, and we'll start with the LA Rams at Arizona. Rams favored by four over under 46 and a half points. Yeah, that last game by the Rams on Monday night was horrific. That was awful. It's so good to see football is thriving in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, <laughs> a Super Bowl contender to very likely not making the postseason. And they don't have a first sniff. round pick until 2022. Yeah, they're in big trouble. And a lot of guys tied up with lengthy contracts over there as well. I honestly felt warmer and fuzzier watching The Shining than I did that game. It was that bad of a beatdown. I have no faith in the Rams. I was actually debating taking this as a best bet. I was actually debating. I didn't do it. I was debating taking Arizona as a best bet. I like Arizona, um, especially at home. They play with a little more confidence on home turf as well. Kyler Murray, right now, it's not a great Arizona team that he's on, but this guy will be a pretty good quarterback. He'll be pretty serviceable. He's shown some brilliance throughout the year, obviously not consistently, but he has shown that he can get the job done. I think, uh, I, I think, and I think... Uh, you're, Larry, throw, you're throwing the sink in I'm this game. I'm throwing the sink. I'm throwing it all. Uh, I think Larry Fitzgerald finds the end zone in this one. It's going to be a toss-up. I mean, it's going to be him, Christian Kirk, and also Isabella getting a lot of looks out there too, but uh, I think uh, Fitzgerald's a safe bet to find Pater at this week. I like Arizona. Arizona to upset at home on Sunday afternoon. The Rams giving Jared Goff $110 million in guaranteed money. <laughs> That's a sentence. That's a human sentence I just yeah. said. Like, 
why i wonder how that's working out for them it's like, yeah like, probably not loving that what happened to the rams last month you could argue like golf legit is one of the worst quarterbacks in the nfl right now like it's a miracle they're above the 500 mark now this might be a bit of an overreaction because this monday loss is so fresh in our mind to the ravens Do but it. yeah I, I like arizona in this game i totally agree with you kyler murray a fun young quarterback he moves the ball around well i like the cardinal receivers to take flight cardinals flight i really like christian kirk to have a big game and I'm going to snap him up in all my daily fantasy leagues. As for the final score, I don't, I'm not so sure about the money line Arizona upset, but I'll take them to cover because I am done with the Rams. They're dead to me. Get on. Get out. Shock them. All right. From the Rams to the other LA team that also is pretty darn bad. Mm-hmm. The LA Chargers at Denver. Chargers favored by one over under at 38 and a half. The divisional showdown that when the season started, I was like, all right, this this could be like a make or break game for the wild card spot. Instead, these are two teams fighting to stay out of the AFC West basement and playoff hopes long gone. Like these teams are terrible. Both offenses are terrible. It shows the line being set at such a low number, like even at 38 and a half. I still like the under in this game. It's hidden eight of the Chargers last 10 games, 10 of Denver's last 12. Like Ryan, this game is going to be bad. I know you're a huge Chargers guy, but it's going to be bad. I'm not going to put myself through the misery of watching it. You may as well have some fun though. I like the Broncos to upset if you can really call it that. It's only a one-point spread as the Chargers have historically struggled in the mile-high altitude of Colorado. Yeah, yeah. You're not wrong on all fronts there, my friend. Um, Yeah, if you can find a Phillip Rivers pick prop, uh, jump on that Uh, because this guy is just throwing them out like Frisbees right now. Uh, There's going to be two possible outcomes in this game. And and, I mean, you mentioned, yeah, I've, I've got some Charger blood in me. But I have never been a fan of uh, of Rivers. I mean, I forgive him at the end of every season. Oh, I got receipts, buddy. Yeah, well, no, no. Get, get out of here. <laughs> I, I forgive him. I'm like, you know, okay, let's try again, Philip. Let's try again. Let's see how we do. And I forgive him every single season. And it's just every single season after a stinker of a performance. And there's been quite a few in a row now that people are starting to turn. The media is starting to turn a little bit. But every single time, it's like Groundhog Day once he completes a few passes in a row. Because the analysts just turn around and go, there he is, surefire Hall of Famer, Philip Rivers. He's back. He's back. Every single time. And no, the age is starting to catch up with this man. The age and the kids are starting to catch up with this man. And it's it's just awful. So there's two outcomes in this game. That's number one. Philip Rivers throws a couple touchdowns, gets called a Hall of Famer, and the Chargers win. Uh, option number two, the more likely in my mind, is that Denver just takes this. No problem. Um, I don't see this being a great game whatsoever. I think the under is a safe bet uh, because these are two pretty terrible teams. Uh, but I see LA's run attack actually carrying them because I don't see Philip Rivers getting the job done. Uh, watch for some decent numbers once again out of Melvin Gordon, who's been the one bright light as of late for them. Uh, Austin Eckler as well to get some use in there um but yeah i mean if the first half broncos from week 11 can show up uh where they they shut out minnesota in minnesota if that first half team shows up yeah this is broncos all the way if the second half team shows up well maybe rethink that one but uh no i like the broncos to win and cover all right you're passionate and I, I, lo- I like it i'm into it buddy yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely i feel bad for you that you have to cheer for the chargers it's groundhog day man <laughs> four picks in a row the next game a touchdown oh there's the surefire hall of famer i could go on for hours all right uh, we have a little side page on wsn.com it's called ryan's rant he just rants for 45 minutes oh, into man. the oblivion about the chargers yeah, all, all the lights are out everyone's gone home <laughs> yeah. it's just me yelling <laughs> it's just and if you want to watch that head to wsn.com you also have state by state guides to find out if sports betting is legal where you live or when you can expect it to become legal down to the final few games ryan what is next on the agenda we have oakland at kansas city the chiefs favored by 10 a decent size spread the over under set at 54 and a half a decent decent size over under um yeah i mean i'm gonna keep this one short and sweet hopefully the jets make their flight this time they did not show up i know i've used that reference once before but it's so good they didn't show up whatsoever in new york last weekend the chiefs have sown some signs here and there of stumbling but this is still a classic chiefs team uh patrick mahomes back on home turf i mean he's gonna find tyreek he's gonna find sammy watkins um yeah I, i i like the chiefs i like the chefs uh, to put up a vintage performance uh, to win and to cover. And the Oakland train, we were on the last few weeks, but I have jumped off and I ain't getting back on anytime soon. All right, well, here's where I toot my own horn because we can rewind the tapes. I said, don't go near Oakland in this game. They don't travel well. 
And I hope you listen to my advice because you jetted to a betting victory. I said, take New York. This week, I expect the Raiders to be better. I'm still leaning towards the Chiefs and the points. Patrick Mahomes, great opportunity to rest up, make sure his knee's good to go over this stretch run. I think he has a huge day. I like him to get the over on throwing touchdowns. I might even double down because I'm putting full faith in his knee. I like him to collect a rushing touchdown. Let's test out that there knee ahead of the playoffs. Why not? The Chiefs love playing in Oakland, too, with victories in nine of the last 10 meetings. One small thing to note, though, because that over seems like the obvious way to go. The under has hit 80% of the time when these two teams clash in KC over the last three seasons. So better beware if you are looking at the over. Should we do a gentleman's bet? I think Josh Allen's going to run one in. You think Patrick Mahomes is going to run one in? Absolutely not, because Josh Allen will run one in. I totally agree with you. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> that's what a, do we got? That's a sucker's bet. <laughs> yeah, what do we got? The Sunday Nighter. Sunday Nighter in New England at Houston. The Pats favored by three and a half points. The over-under is at 44 and a half, and it finally happened. The Pats didn't cover. In my defense, I said take New England if the weather held up. Again, rewind the tapes, because I didn't. I knew the weather would be bad. Where are these where tapes? Thomas, rewind the tapes. <laughs> Full Thomas? Full Thomas. I know, sorry, Tom. I know you want your, yeah, your yeah. birthday. Angry parent over here. Angry. Oh, that's how fired up I am about these Thomas tapes. Thomas Andrew Williams. I knew the weather would be bad, just not, like, that, that was brutal at Foxborough, right? Like, they was, to the point where they weren't even ha- putting someone back to collect the punt. They yeah. were just like, all right, let's just, like, let it sink into the mud and the dirt. As for this game, though, I like the Pats to bounce back. New England loves playing in Houston. They've won the last five meetings in the Lone Star State. I also think the over is definitely in play here. 44.5 points seems a little low for these two offenses. Uh, one player I will be avoiding, though, DeAndre Hopkins going nowhere near him. Stephon Gilmore, a machine last week, holding Amari Cooper to zero catches, and he will draw Hopkins as an assignment, which is brutal news for Hopkins fantasy openers, uh, owners. That's me right here, unfortunately. Since joining the Pats, Gilmore's limited Hopkins to just 85 total yards receiving in two meetings head-to-head so just over 40 yards a game i'm taking the under on hopkins receiving yards and i'm taking the pats to cover yeah yeah i think it's a great play and i will fuller i mean to your point had a huge week last week as well on his return so uh i'm with you on that one and again with the with the weather playing such a major role uh it ripped a guy right out of the game who this guy owns in fantasy and that was james white who just was not used whatsoever because the ground was disgusting and everyone was afraid to throw a screen pass in that game too, which is what he usually eats up and dominates with. So um, I see the Pats utilizing this guy, going back to number 28 early and often. Uh, Right now there's a prop up for seven receptions. I'm taking the over on that with James White. Uh, Jump all over that. Um, You know, he's usually good for 10 to 15 yards after the catch. Uh, And that's going to be an X factor for these guys. And, um, you know, as much as I would like to say uh, this is the Houston that we saw earlier in the season. It's just not. I mean, that that bye week took the air out of the tires a little bit. And yeah, they're coming off a win over Indy, but that was not a convincing win whatsoever. I think we can agree on that. Uh, so I like the Pats to win. I like the Pats to cover on the road. I'm not as confident with you with the over-under. I'm not going to go near that one. Uh, but I think that's a safe play, staying away from Hopkins. And James White, Jimmy, my boy. All right, let's go, go with him. He's a beauty. He burned me last week. I know. I know it was the weather. Last week but was rough. But let's just, that that was an oddity. That whole game, we can't go with anything in that game. All right, one more game to go, and it is the Monday Nighter. We've had a bunch of weeks in a row now of great Monday night games. This one should live up to the billing. Minnesota at Seattle. Seahawks favored by three points. Over under at 49. Ryan, I'm curious to see what you think of this one. Yes, this will be a close affair, and uh, and you're not right. The Monday Nighters actually have been watchable, which we can't say for the past few years, really. Yeah. Um, so it's been nice to see that uh, the ESPN broadcast has had uh, some decent games here and there. Um, but yeah, Russell Wilson has shown, and he already did on one Monday Nighter, that he is built for prime time football, especially at home uh, under the lights of Century Link. This guy usually dominates. The thing with uh, Wilson and the Hawks, though, is that they seem to always be a second half team. They kind of gauge things in the first couple quarters, and then they just come out firing in that second half. So uh, for Minnesota to have a chance in this game, they've really got to come out of the gates firing. And coming off a bye week, I don't know how well or you know how often they're going to be hitting their targets here. Um, but what I will tell you is that I do like um, I do like Kyle Rudolph to to see some looks in this game. I know Adam Thielen's checking back in, but the Hawks have had a tough time against tight ends all season long. Case in point was Zach Ertz going off last week. Even Dallas Goddard saw a lot of looks last week too. Um, so I like a tight end in this game against the Hawks defense, which is not all it's built up to be. Um, yeah, Thielen's going to be a busy one out there. It's going to be a close affair. But at the end of the day, 
I have to agree with your best bet, I'm afraid. The Seahawks, they are built for primetime football, and they're going to win this one and cover at home. All right, great game to close out the week. Potential to kind of be an offensive explosion with these two teams being in the Northwest. Uh, the last seven, actually make it seven games here, six have hit the over when these two teams meet in Seattle. So there you go. But other news, the fumble woes of Chris Carson back last week, so I'm avoiding him as a daily fantasy play completely. I do like Delvin Cook to find the end zone, and as for the game itself, I love the Seahawks at the current line, three. Like I said off the top, it's my best bet. I would have probably taken it at my best bet if it was at anything under a touchdown. This should be two or three points higher, and it, I think the line will probably move up until game time. Not only will Seattle have the rowdy crowd on their side, so it's history. They've won their last five meetings against the Vikings. The Seabirds playing with some purpose, trying to keep pace with the 49ers, so you know they got to get fired up, and this is this is you mentioned it. This is where Russell Wilson shines. The primetime games. He's active in the pocket. I like to hit uh, him to hit the over on rushing yards because he's just moving around so much, and he's probably going to be a little gun shy giving the ball to Carson after Carson's weak game last week. Even though they got the victory, so over on rushing yards for Russell Wilson and Carson. Well, just enjoy fumbleitis. Yeah, fair enough. All right, are you ready to double down on that uh, on that best bet? Because you can go searching through WSN.com and you can find different sites with different lines, different spreads, and you can also find the props that have the additional different spreads as well. So if we if we found a spread up at like six, seven points, you still feeling pretty anything under like seven? Yeah, six and a half will do. Okay, I'm liking it. Okay. Give me those odds, WSN.com. Let's I'm, go. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep all of the tapes from the VCR for next week. We'll <laughs> yeah. see how we do. Tom slash Thomas will hook you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Thank buddy. You, mm. All right. Uh, it was it's a busy week because no more bye weeks in the NFL schedule. So this was a jam packed episode. But we have a few minutes to recap our best bets. I just mentioned mine. I think Seattle covers. What was your best bet of the week, Ryan? It's a three and a half point spread, and I like the Jets to cover it in Cincinnati. They've got Andy Dalton back there slinging the ball again. <laughs> and, I mean, we didn't have confidence in him earlier in the year. Now he's coming off the bench. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of trying to get a showcase for a job next year somewhere else, um, you know, but maybe he can Matt Flynn his way onto a team for a huge contract that he'll never earn. Oh, Matt Flynn. That's the job I want. Yeah, let's forget about the Ryan uh, or the uh, Griffin the third there. Yeah. Anyways, let's go with uh, the Jets there to take this best bet. To take me home, baby. To bring me back into the winning streak. All right, there we go. The Jets to beat the Bengals. The Seahawks to win. Those are our best bets. Again, head to WSN.com. Plenty of footage and footage of everything. They got it all there. They it's got video breakdowns. They everything got you need. everything you need. DraftKings links, FanDuel links. They, they, you know, they got it all. Hey, coming across. I'm going to hit my mic, too. Happy Thanksgiving, my friend. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. I am... Uh, what Enjoy you, your turkey. I'm thankful for a Seahawks cover <laughs> on Monday night. We'll see how thankful I am. All right, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And hope you enjoy week 13 of the NFL season. We'll be back with week number 14, breaking down our best bets, and we'll keep my hot streak going. Seahawks to cover. Have a good weekend, everybody.